Hello there everybody, this is Cholera, and this is a very exciting game I'm about to bring you. It is not a Bisu game, but it is a Stork game, and more importantly than just being a Stork game, it is also a NC Yellow game. That is right, NC Yellow, old school yellow, real yellow, playing for Air Force Ace, and uh, we haven't seen him play very well recently, but he is playing against Stork, the man who single-handedly relit Reach's career by being a punching bag and losing horribly to him. That is right, NC Yellow, the man on the left here, might be able to revitalize his entire career by punching up on Stork, the man on the right. Um, so hopefully Stork will oblige us by losing the NC Yellow, and hence give him a, a surge of confidence that will bring him to uh, great success in the future. We'll have to see. Uh, for those of you who are wondering where Bisu versus Effort was, uh, it, it will be cast. Um, I just actually wanted to save it because it's a, a very recent game, and uh, we might end up doing a dual commentary on it or something. So, um, anyway, we're going to be seeing what happens in this game. This is Outsider, another new map for this season. Uh, it is a three-player map on the char tile side, as you can see. Um, spawn points at the uh, 1, 5, and 9 clocks. And uh, I think this map is... Um, kind of interesting. Uh, you have a natural expansion in front of your base, and you have your mineral only uh, behind your main base on another ramp. However, that mineral only leads to another open area, um, and it's possible to trick things through the mineral lines to get into the back of your base. Um, that is a possibility. Uh, or to drop things, of course, back there. If you're not paying attention, you could just find, you know, a bunch of uh, lings inside your base, or infested terrans, or, I don't know, something like that. Um, no, there, you can't get infested Terrans on this map. Ha ha. It's not Holy World. Ugh. Anyway, um, <laughs> we've got here Stork at the 1 o'clock location. NC Yellow, man. NC Mofo Yellow. I love NC Yellow. You know, he was the, the first King of Silver. And, oh yeah, Stork nowadays is not the King of Silver. And there's Zellos! Oh my god, there's Zellos. He looks like he's... Hasn't eaten in a while or something. Looks hungry. Zelos, of course, uh, World Cyber Game winner, and uh, once known as the Perfect Terran. Still known as the Perfect Terran, I guess. Oh, look at this! Look at that! Stork gonna go for a uh, Gateway First build here. Um, we've actually seen that. Uh, the last time I was watching this map, there was also a uh, two-gate opening for the Protoss player, so um, it does look like that's gonna be something that's done quite frequently here on Outsider. And we're going to have to see how it works here against uh, Yellow. Yellow going to go for a 12 hatch. Pretty surprising because back in Yellow's day, um, back when he was good, uh, people actually built just uh, a limit. They were limited to three hatcheries. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of that because uh, you couldn't build a fourth hatchery. Um, they would just destroy your main hatchery if you did that. That's right. That's why NC Yellow never expanded. Um, didn't need to. Anyway, <laughs> obviously I'm making fun of the fact that, you know, old school players are very low econ players in general. Um, although, actually, NC Yellow, back in the day, actually had um, w was not known as that low of an econ player. However, his uh, victories, um, the most spectacular ones, actually been fairly uh, low econ games. You know, a lot of weird stuff, like um, proxy hatchery against the Terran, for example, against Boxer in the finals of an OSL. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that makes NC Yellow a great player. Um, anyway, we're going to be seeing who's going to win this one uh, in this uh, situation, because we got a two-gate. Oh, man, two-gate with a pylon being built here. Oh, Stork, you bad person, you. Going for the cheese against Yellow, that's almost harsh, man. I mean, NC Yellow is, like, still too busy, like, dropping off Reach's girlfriends from last night. Um, he's still too tired from that, man. Give him, like, a few minutes to, to catch his breath before you rush him, dude. Um, so we're going to see who wins here. The true king of uh, king of silver, uh, which is Yellow, by the way. He's called the king of silver because he made it into the final so many times. Or Stork, the new and not-so-true king of silver. He used to be the king of silver for a while until he managed to win a gold. But uh, Stork, of course, oh man, Stork has actually failed here. He was trying to put up a shield battery, and uh, wow, I can't believe it, but NC Yellow's held off this uh, two-gate pretty darn well, um, but at the cost of uh, th having to f make three sunken colonies. No, only two sunken colonies, actually. He's canceled the other one um, right enough because he doesn't need to have it up. And Stork, actually, uh, is the one who comes out uh, worse for wear here in this, in this um, early exchange, I gotta say. Because uh, Stork didn't do any substantial damage, really. Um, if you, if you as the Zerg player, have only been forced to make two Sunkins and you didn't lose any drones or anything, 
you've won that battle um, against a, a two gate, and I presume that was actually a nine ten gate there from Stork, given how early everything went. So uh, Stork right now just stuck with a ton of zealots, and is he going to be able to do it? I mean, is he going to be able to go Mantos style here and just uh, win with with you know speed lots or something, or just pure zealots? I don't know. We'll have to see. And actually, um, we've got a link inside of uh, uh, Stork's base. He's going to see that Stork has not started mining gas, which means Stork is probably going to expand right now. Uh, maybe pick up a forge also at the same time. And we're going to see what uh, Yellow decides to do here. Interesting decision here for Yellow. I mean, is he could actually go two hatch mutas because um, he's got gas really early. I uh, should have noticed, I uh, should have said, rather, I noticed, but I should have said that uh, he got gas um, very early, uh, right after his uh, um, second hatchery. So... Uh, he is going to go for Lair right now, but B but Stork is actually going to have a scout right in the back of his base. He tricks over a probe into the back, as we, I said was possible, and now he's going to spot the Lair. So smart work there by Stork. Um, this should be uh, uh, good for him. This should uh, allow him to, to be able to prepare against mutil Mutilisks. Um, you know, he's going to know to put up a number of cannons, basically. Um, and we'll see what Yellow decides to do if he ch chooses to adjust at this point. You know, maybe go for Lurkers. That would be certainly a low econ kind of fun thing to do. Lurker drop or something like that. Or if he tries to play more standard after this. Although I'm not sure if he can though. He only has two hatcheries. So, uh, you know, that's not really a great opening for transitioning into, you know, five hatcheries or something like that. And wow, Stork right now, um, keeping that probe alive and keeping it annoying. Um, looks like, interesting enough, we've got both Aspire and Hydralis Den uh, for, um, for Yellow. And uh, I really don't know what Yellow's thinking about here. This is really interesting. Maybe he wants Stork to see the Spire. I don't know. We're going to have to find out. Stork is going to find out pretty soon anyway because he has a Stargate, but I'm not sure exactly what Yellow's doing. This is actually very interesting. Um... And maybe, just maybe, he's going to spot it. Oh, I think maybe he wanted him to spot this. Just possibly. He wanted um, Stork to, to spot that. I don't know. I mean, that that would be a very, very advanced move to try to, you know, build the spire near the cliff and then try to force the probe over there. But, you know, Yellow is a very smart player. I mean, he might not be the best player anymore. Um, and, you know, he, he might be, you know, finding it much more difficult to modernize his play compared to, uh, you know, some of the other old players. But he, he's obviously a very smart person and uh, a very experienced player. So, uh, yes, I am rooting for Yellow in this game. Normally I do root for Stork because he's uh, the dinosaur toss. Um, but here I'm going to root for the ancient Yellow, the old Yellow, the old guard. Uh, I think he's managed to kill Stork's probe there. Um, he's also built a third sunken colony, I guess. Uh, interesting. Um, I guess, uh, you know, just a little concern about all the zealots that he saw. But anyway, what are these about to come out? I guess they are mutalisks. Um, given that he built them about the same time, but I could be faked out also. They might just be a bunch of hydras that were built simultaneously. We'll, we'll see soon. Stork looks like he's pretty ready, though, for mutalisks. Um, he spent a lot of money here on uh, getting cannons up. So I would think that he's ready for this. But uh, it, yeah, it is mutalisks. That is interesting. So all those mind games were basically um, for nothing. <laughs> so that Den maybe, I don't know, maybe that Den's been researching um, uh, Lurker aspect this entire time. I have no idea, to be honest. Um, but we're going to see what happens. Oh, Stork! Oh, man, what is the Pterodactyl Protoss thinking? Is he going to go what I think he's going to go? Is he going to go straight for carriers? I mean, no, right? Nobody does that. Nobody does that. Stork, you're not going to do that. But he is getting plus one, it seems. And um, plus one air, rather. And he's got a second Stargate. Uh, so pretty sick play here coming from Stork, potentially. Just really gross play. I mean, in the sense that, like, man, I'm going to just beat you down with my fists. And that actually happened in the Cotter Cup. Um, a Proros player went straight to Nexus, to base, straight into carriers. Okay, Stork has not gone insane. He's not going to do what that guy did. Or tried to do, rather. He totally failed after getting carriers. Stork is just going to go for a heavy Corsair Reaver build here. And this is actually going to be a, a, a big air fight here. Whoever can control this area will effectively control um, the mid game here. Uh, and we'll see who's better at this. I really don't know. I mean, Yellow has uh, looks like he's got pretty good micro years. Been managed to pick off uh, a number of pros, but pretty soon um, Stork is going to have a, a very large number of upgraded Corsairs. And then Yellow is going to be the one who has to run, but um, he can still try to snipe the Corsairs. It'll be very important for him to snipe the Corsairs uh, with his Scourge. 
Looks like um, Yellow is also picking up the double gas expansion at the bottom left. Uh, there are double gas expansions in the corners, I should have mentioned, uh, and they are separated uh, from uh, the rest of the map uh, by more of those probe line, uh, mineral lines. So, you know, uh, you, you do have to mine through them or, uh, or trick a unit through. And we'll see um, if Stork decides to take the back base here. He might decide to right now. Uh, that's why the, the pylon's being built there. But yeah, we are seeing two gate here, and um, we might be seeing...